it's another day another video of these woke people talking absolute nonsense but in this video we are getting into a video with andrew wilson laying the complete smackdown on a feminist but before we get into the video this video is sponsored by diyoj which is a custom jersey making company who has made the shirt that i am currently wearing right now whether it be baseball american football and football and i mean the real football or as they call it soccer in the united states of america and if you guys want to get discounts hit the link in the description below and you'll be able to do that there but without further ado let us get into the video and it seems like if i recall your answer well perhaps you want to just restate your position on that yeah i i do think you can be sexist towards men i think i kind of compared it to our discussion of race and i said it was i think it's a bit different from race but i, I do think that you can be sexist towards men but as you would agree you can't really exert any kind of real force over men so what's the you know What's surprisingly it seemed like it was going well when she said that you actually can be sexist towards men which a lot of these feminists and woke people don't believe in but then of course she had to say something stupid there are other ways that women can engage in sexism towards men that doesn't also involve them exerting force towards them and even in that scenario there are still some women who do exert force towards men but obviously women knowing that they are the weaker vessel in general before people come for me in the comments towards men are the weaker ones in general they engage in their sexism towards men in different avenues one of the big ones that we see nowadays is reputation destruction and that's what they do a lot of or maybe just taking their money which they also do a lot of force why would force be the requirement for sexism sexism would just no be i'm saying you can towards... you can be sexism but i'm saying you're not really going to be able to nothing will really come of it i mean if if men have the power and that's how it should be it doesn't then... mean that so just so you understand and i see people always conflate this argument in fact the super chatter did because everything will eventually reduce to force it does not mean that society always operates inside of the mode of force it will just always end up going back to force always inevitably so you can have brainwashed societies which we have right now and you can have people who operate inside of these delusions and operate as though there is power where there is no power in fact some of the most powerful people on planet earth are able to manipulate people into thinking they have all sorts of power, which they do not actually have. This is part of a game of psychological manipulation, but that does not mean that you cannot oppress men and their sexuality, nor that you can even, even uh, the patriarchy itself. So what, what's your definition of oppression for men? Since we were kind of going back and forth on the I'll definition I'll just utilize yours. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, there's no doubt that men can oppress men and there's no doubt that women can use the levers of power to also be oppressive towards men for their own aims. That can happen. Okay. So, th I mean, that makes it sound like maybe feminism isn't so futile then. If we really, if we're capable of uh, kind of, if we're capable of oppressing men, then how would we not also be capable of kind of reclaiming that kind of power for ourselves for our own aims? <laughs> because as I've stated previously, the oppression of women towards men does not only come in their use of force, which obviously they can't really use most times. It comes in the manner of reputation destruction or even in some situations using other men to oppress other men, which is what they do as well. It's really not that hard to understand and I can guarantee you right now that we do not need feminism for anything. You're talking about oppression. You're talking about pushing back against a specific group. This does not mean that ultimately um, you have the monopoly on force. Men do. But so think of it this way. You're inside of a prison, okay? And there's two guards and there's 100 inmates. The two guards can keep the 100 inmates under control, right? But if the inmates collectively go, what happens to the guards? They, they will die. Yeah. So this is, it's the illusion of safety and there's an illusion of systems, but they eventually always break down. But that does not mean while we don't collectively live inside of these socially constructed delusions, which sexism would be one and a race would be another, right? Socially constructed delusion that people cannot be oppressed inside of them because oppression is a socially constructed delusion too, right? So the oppression of men is a socially constructed delusion. As much as it is for women. Okay. Well then. So, so then, if we agree on that, then men can't be sexist towards women ever. But I mean, so but I'm coming from the perspective that we are living and operating in this system. Like regardless of whether or not you think it's a delusion, this is how the world is operating. People mm -hmm. are affected by it. I think we kind of talked about that on the on the panel that 
just because something doesn't necessarily translate to like a physical objective reality doesn't mean we aren't all experiencing it. Sure. So, you can have people who get their hearts cut out on a temple and their bodies kicked down because it gets sacrificed to God or their God. And, um, you know, that's a effect. You can say this is an effect of your worship of this demonic deity, which does not exist, right? Yeah. Yeah. So sure. I agree with that, but it just doesn't negate my point at all. Well, I'm not sure why it's, it's valid to talk about the oppression of men under this delusional system, but we can't also talk about the way women are negatively affected by it. We can, we can talk about, and women used to, they used to talk about the issues that they had all the time from the moral high ground when they weren't being utilized as political tools. So do men have the moral high ground now? As political men, um, ultimately there will be a select few men who will end up with a moral high ground through the church, things like this. But generally speaking, inside of society, politicians almost never have the moral high ground. So, I mean, if they don't have the moral high ground, on average, why should they be able to talk about their issues? I mean, why, I guess... Because they have the monopoly on force. Okay, and, so... And all of a, your subjective morality is going to reduce to force. That's why. And so they can enforce whatever the hell they want, and might makes right if you're a subjectivist. What else does it make? I mean, that doesn't sound like men are very oppressed. Then it doesn't really sound like men are facing a real harsh reality. No, I'm saying then. that there could be the men who are in the levers of power who don't have. It's really not that hard to understand what he's saying. Just because men in general have the monopoly on force doesn't mean that other men can't be oppressed. You do know that there were other things in history where men were oppressing other men. It's really not that hard to understand. But of course, being a feminist, these people don't understand anything else other than their stupid brainwashing in their college campus. Harsh reality, now, saying then. that there could be the men who are in the levers of power who don't have great moral claims but can utilize force doesn't mean that you can't have men who are oppressed in society, even if it's by other men. But it can certainly be done by women as well who have their hands on the levers of power due to a shared delusion. So why, why can't those women who have their hands on the levers of power use it for women's aims like feminism? They do. And what we yeah. end up with is antinatalism and all sorts of nonsense, which is why it's going to reduce back to a power centralization where men eventually but collectively I mean, that, that's eliminate a women's you rights. Can't, you can't prove that's actually going to happen. I can. Well, I can't prove for sure, but I can show you historically what the standard has been, has been this, is that yeah. always what ends up happening is the force doctrine gets reintroduced and rights collectively are taken away from women. It's not that this is something I advocate be done. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you that that's what's going to happen. Okay. Yeah. It's an event. It's an eventuality, which you basically is inescapable. Okay. I'll take your word for it. Well, since this was sort of a two pronged thing and it stemmed from the conversation that we had the other day about race, uh, we could perhaps delve into that briefly. So can you be racist? towards white people i still say no here we go again with this woke indoctrination that's going on in college campuses in social media where white women especially claim that you can't be racist towards white people the reason i'm going to guess as most of them say is because black people aren't in positions of power which doesn't even follow the definition itself of racism racism itself is prejudice against someone based on their race but of course like all of these woke individuals do they change their definitions to suit their agenda can't be racist towards white people no okay you can be prejudiced against white people on like an individual Sh basis well, why don't we do definitions then mm -hmm. so um how do you define racism i would say that racism is it prejudice is part of it but you have to be in a position of power prejudice plus power sure that's yeah that's kind of like a, a okay. nice like sociology I reject your definition what's okay. yours andrew i don't need to give a counter definition i just reject yours why am i wrong I, I don't know. I mean, you don't know why I'm wrong to reject that definition. Why? Well, you haven't explained it. why you reject it. Why do I need to even give an explanation? Wait, is this Hitchens razor? We're not going to get very far then. I don't know. Well, it's not Hitchens razor. It's just to point out that from your subjective, if everything inside of your worldview is subjective, then you saying the definition that I use is prejudice plus power. Why shouldn't I just reject that definition as being something I don't accept as being true? Okay, but then I mean, what's how can we say that any definition of racism is objective? Well, you couldn't. That is the whole point and a part of why these people's movement is utter stupidity because you guys just make up everything and everything according to you is subjective. So as he said, 
why should he accept your definition and that was part of the problem i'm saying about all of these woke people they change things according to how they feel and then expect you to accept what they have changed the definition to be which makes no sense I even bother discussing it then i don't know good where... question it was the one i was asking you the other night which is you seem to think that race is a social construction right yeah, I mean, so do you if disagree? race is a social construction and all of your definitions of it are subjective, including the oppression being subjective, why even talk about it? Wouldn't that eliminate racism? Because same. OK, you are arguing that this is all like a delusional construction, but male oppression is still real because they're still living it. Right. Even though it's all a delusional construction. So race is a delusional no, construction. No, no, the power mechanisms are a delusional construction not the effect we've already agreed that the effect that's my exact true. point the effects are real yeah i understand but that still doesn't tell me why i should accept that definition as being true well that's not what we were talking about you were asking me then if race is a social construct if we all just agree it doesn't exist why how can there yeah be... but the effect is only real if you accept the construct as being true <laughs> that's not true because, <laughs> it is true no there there are objective effects of of racism of because you oppression. accept it as being true no, I mean, if you if you tomorrow say that race doesn't exist, race isn't mm -hmm. real, that's not going to change the fact that... No, no, no. But if everybody... All of the college education that they go through and they can't even critically think and come to sound conclusion as to what he is saying, it's really simple. If you believe that race is a social construct and then if it was the case that everyone in the world believed that race is a social construct and they acted as if race wasn't a thing, the effects of the oppression that they go through wouldn't happen because race is a social social construct and people believe that it's a social construct and they act as if it's a social construct and it's not real it's not that hard it's one plus one equals two but of course because these people have been so brainwashed they can't even understand simple logic it honestly hurts my brain to listen to these people but let us continue say that race doesn't exist race isn't mm -hmm. real that's not going to change the fact that no 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 but if everybody acted as though it wasn't then it would change the effect I, it wouldn't move people out of neighborhoods that have been historically redlined. Why? There wouldn't be any more redlining because there wouldn't be any construction called race but the, anymore. But those neighborhoods would still be worse places yeah, to live. Yeah, but those people would eventually move off of those neighborhoods and there would be no okay, restrictions because well, uh, nobody cared about race, right? That's I the mean, whole sure, point. I mean, sure, in that world where suddenly everyone wakes up and doesn't care about race, I guess, and yeah, in like 10 to 20 years, people could... Uh, yeah, so then, then the, point, the point is, is for the social construction of race and for oppression, then the best thing in the world to do would be for people to just not even follow the construction, right? But that's and then not if gonna... that's eliminated, nobody believes in race anymore. None of them are racist. That's not going to happen. I mean, the best thing for male oppression would be... It's not going to happen, right. Okay, well, the best thing for male oppression would be to just wake up and 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 take all the rights away from women yeah and yeah that's, but that's not gonna... <laughs> right exactly exactly but that's the inevitability but that's, that's my not point. gonna but you're saying that's not gonna happen no so... i'm saying it i've literally said over and over again it's an inevitability that it happens okay but is that you think that's happening soon you think that men are gonna wake up and take all the rights away from women i think that as you see the polarization happening and you start to see things like the repeal of the 19th moving forward you start to see more and more conservative politicians pushing back against this idea that suffrage itself is a great idea i think that the voting pool will eventually get limited and i think i'll see it within my lifetime yeah okay i mean then why why doesn't the case of race ignoring it is going to be the best the best well, possible i'm not even thing. saying that it is i'm just yeah. asking you why sh i should accept that racism itself can only be prejudice plus power rather than just a personal treatment of a person because we don't see the same effects on on white people but even if we don't see the same effects that doesn't mean that i need to assume that that's racism okay so i mean if we want to agree to a different definition wherein you can be racist against white people then i guess my question is why would it matter why would what matter being racist Race, against white people yeah if there's no effects if because it's not they don't like it okay yeah that's the same reason that you don't want us to be racist to black people right because no they because like there it. are actual material effects that that they don't like privileged that they don't like sure okay yeah. why why keep women in the home they don't like it some of them don't yeah, like but it. they do like it so well, some of them don't you can yeah, ask but, them but those they've never been restricted to only being in the home that's never happened that's delusional think okay but never. I'm ju I'm it's just, never happened i'm just saying yeah sometimes people just not liking something is enough of a reason i guess to yeah to take so it then seriously. that would be racism to white people if you're doing something to them that they don't like right yeah, that, sure they would based not like on their it. race that's racism 
Okay, yeah. Absolute checkmate. As per usual, these people say absolute nonsense, but will continue to double down and believe in the nonsense that they spout out of their mouths. But anyway, that was another video. If you guys enjoyed the video, like the video as much as possible, comment down below, subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow me on Instagram and X at Yinka That Guy, and I am out.